Hey guys, it's Jeff with SparkFun Education. And about a couple of weeks ago, we were at a conference and I had a long chat with a teacher who said it'd be really handy if we did some intro to robotics stuff using our products. So today what we're going to do is we're going to start from scratch. We're going to look at how to do some simple robotics tasks with the Arduino Uno um, or Dwee Milanove, any of the Arduino stuff. Um, we're going to look at driving motors and uh, how to use transistors. And then later on, hopefully in the video, we're going to get some time today to look at the H-Bridge driver and how to do reversing motion with motors with the H-Bridge driver. I've got some parts laid out here, and let's talk a little bit about the basic parts that we're going to be using today. I've got my Arduino set up. I've got an H-Bridge driver, which is basically an array of a bunch of transistors like this one, the very common 2N222 transistor. Um, that H-Bridge will actually switch current going both ways. So we can make this motor not only rotate counterclockwise, but clockwise as well. And this is really handy if I want to do short turning radius stuff. I can use motors on a robot to go in either direction using skid steering, where I just turn one motor on and crab to one side, um, or turn the opposite motor on and crab to the other side. But it's really nice to be able to turn one going one way and one going the opposite way and get these short radius turns. And we'll talk about that later on today. Loaded to my Arduino is the most basic sketch, the blink sketch. And let's look at trying to hook a motor up to the Arduino um, just using the blink sketch. I've got my, my black leg from the motor plugged into ground. And I'm blinking on pin 13, just like the blink sketch always does. And if I plug into pin 13, nothing happens to my motor. And that's because pin 13 doesn't provide enough current to turn this motor. If I go over to my VIN, which is all the current coming from my USB port, my motor operates. The chip won't source enough current to turn the motor. So I gotta figure out a way to switch current with one of my microcontroller pins. And let me build a small circuit and we'll take a look at that. The 2N222 is uh, in the breadboard. I've supplied it from VIN on one side. I haven't connected it on the other side and I'm just gonna plug my motor in from the other leg, the third leg of the transistor to my ground lead. And I'm actually gonna move this back one pin closer because I'm gonna put a flyback diode in there to keep the current from flowing back to the microcontroller and possibly causing any damage. And I have a 330 ohm current limiting resistor going to the signal leg, which is gonna come off of pin 13. When everything's plugged in, what I get is the motor turning off and on corresponding to the blink sketch, um, which we can also visually see on the LED that's connected to pin 13. This is the most basic way to run a motor. Now what I want to do is I want to get a range of speeds out of this motor without losing any torque. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a pretty simple sketch um, that's kind of a conglomeration of stuff, but we'll show you how this goes. And I'm going to use a dial potentiometer and the analog write command in order to get full torque but different rotational speeds out of this motor. On one side of my potentiometer, I'm going to supply this 5 volts, 5V in the Arduino. The other side is going to go to ground, and I like to color code things a little bit. I've been using green, but on this one, because I'm out of green, um, I'm going to use brown, and I'm going to go to the opposite pin on the potentiometer, and the signal pin on the potentiometer. I've been using blue for signal, so I'm going to use blue again. I'm going to go to that pin, the center pin, and A0. So what I've done is I've hooked up an analog read device and I'm using the basic analog read sketch that's in um, examples basics. And I loaded that sketch and I added a pin mode to it, pin 9, and I've got an analog read on there that I'm actually writing the value from that read to the motor. I've kept the same circuit, changed my pin from pin 13 to pin 9. You can see this is going really slow, but as I turn the potentiometer up, I get full output on this. And I can adjust this basically using a dimmer switch. Without losing the torque of the motor, I can lower the RPMs. So again, in robotics, this is a great application. Um, maybe we're approaching an object or some unknown condition and we want to slow down. We can throttle back that motor, slow the bot down, and get that kind of responsiveness out of it. We can also use this in motion control to ramp up speeds. Moving along here, what we've done is plugged in the H-Bridge drive chip 
and I'm going to use the interactive telecommunications program tutorial on this and take a look at how an H-bridge would drive a motor. And there's a link to the ITP tutorial at the bottom um, and you can look at that. They did a great job of laying this out. There are fritzing diagrams. It's really clear on how to hook this up. The first thing I'm going to do is hook my motor up and this is per the wiring at ITP. I'm going to use this pin as the power supply and this is going to go straight to VIN. My ground goes to the center on both of them. I'm going to connect that ground rail to the ground on my chip right here. So I'm going to do a little hacking here. What I want to do is show how if we pull the pins with my yellow and blue wires high and low, we can get this motor to spin backwards and forwards. And basically what we're doing is we're going to supply the same amount of current that the microcontroller does. I pulled off the 5 volts through a 330 ohm resistor and I'm just going to jump these wires. And when I do them in this orientation, I get a spin that's going clockwise. If I swap my wires and this one's low and this one's high, you can see it goes counterclockwise. And that's how an H-bridge works. So then all I have to do is manipulate the pins on my microcontroller high and low to get that motor to spin forwards or backwards. And this H-bridge has the capability of driving two motors. If you go on our website or you go to our competitors, God bless Adafruit and everybody else, um, you can get these chips for like a dollar. In the next set of videos, what we're going to look at is actually programming this stuff, taking sensors and integrating that sensor data into how we drive these motors and steer a robot. So we'll see you next time on a series of videos on basic robotics brought to you by SparkFun. Take it easy.